Morning folks and welcome back for another video. Yeah, we seem to be doing a few these days. Uh, but anyway, we've got some interesting tap to show you again. So this little device here is a Class D audio amplifier made in guess where? China of all places. Never, never have guessed it. Uh, but anyway, um, <clears throat> this is um, marketed as a 150 watt Class D audio amplifier uh, subwoofer. So uh, it's um, probably something you put in uh, maybe a car or perhaps home cinema unit, something like that, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, they're not that expensive. I think I paid about 20 or 30 quid for this. And the reason why I bought it, uh, because you're probably asking, well, you know, uh, you, you you normally build lovely valve amps, uh, yeah I do, and uh, couldn't possibly th think of using something like this. But anyway, I've got it and I'm going to use it for something else. And you're probably asking, what are you going to use it for? Well, I'll move this over, just to zoom out a bit. A transformer, you ask, indeed, but not any normal transformer. This transformer is from a burn deck transmitter which a couple of guys on the AM net are using, well a few guys and zoom out a little bit. The interesting thing about this transformer is a modulation transformer but not just any modulation transformer. This, this uh, transformer's got two windings like normal one would you'd expect the secondary is um, basically the high voltage uh, side which you would connect to the anode or plate of your transmitting tube and some guys that I know have used these are using valves such as the 4CX250B uh, but you could use something equally powerful, an 813 and the primary of this, instead of being connected to the anodes of your modulator tubes, as you normally have in a push-pull arrangement, what this has is a low impedance winding, which I think is the yellow and the blue one, a low impedance winding, which you can connect uh, to a solid state amplifier, an audio amp, you probably need something about 150, maybe 200 watts of audio uh, to drive one of these. And hence the reason why we got this uh, Chinese power supply to take a look at. A uh, Chinese amplifier, sorry. Uh, so I was wondering whether this might do uh, to, um, you know, to power this, uh, uh, this uh, amplifier. Uh, sorry, this amplifier to power this uh, modulation transformer so that we can uh, use it uh, in AM. So just having a look at this in more detail, uh, not quite sure exactly what the uh, what the audio amp chips are in here, but I think they're these, I did manage to glimpse one or two of them because it's got quite a, a hefty heat sink there on top. And all the other... Uh, semiconductors are uh, covered with this big chunky heat sink. I mean if we look at the PCB, a PCB seems to be relatively well made, it looks quite good. Um, and all the components, you know, a lot of them are SMDs as you'd expect. And um, from what I can tell this has, it runs off, uh, where was it, 12 to 24 volts input and it's got an out it's got a single output the input here just get it into focus a bit you've got two inputs uh, input left input right and ground but you've only got one output so it's not entirely stereo so I presume that if this was driving a a subwoofer then you could probably set it to maybe one side or another. You do have a switch there which I have discovered. There's a, there's a little sliding switch there which I have discovered I think 
selects which uh, input you want, whether you take the left or the right. So it's quite it's quite nice. Um, but anyway, what I wanted to do is to uh, just to see whether this thing would work, whether it's got potential uh, to drive one of these uh, burn debt mod transformers. So what we're going to do is we're going to hitch it up to some test equipment and uh, see how it all uh, tests out in terms of frequency response and sort of power that it can give. Right, we've connected this <coughs> amp up to a signal generator and as you can see from the tracing on the scope we're running at about 200.96 hertz and the uh, sine wave looks pretty good actually you'll just uh, see if we can there you see um, looks all right and if we look at the, uh, the power supply there so we've got it at a sort of meager 12 volts we can increase this up to 24 but the current demand usually stays the same so we're running about 12 volts at 2.1 amps and if we look at the uh, the HB8903, we've got it on the uh, distortion level. So at that level, at that frequency, it's 0.2% uh, uh, THD, which is, um, yeah, not too bad, I guess, considering it's quite low frequency. Um, I think what's interesting, though, is that get back to the scope. If I increase the uh, input and everything we should uh, see when it starts to distort which is actually not that much. So I'm just increasing the input by just by a fraction and you can see it's starting to clip there. So I think what we'll do is we'll see how much output power that uh, that amplifier is generating at the moment. So <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll increase the power a little bit until it starts just until it starts clipping. And just about there. Just there I think. So and then looking at the the audio analyzer that's uh <clears throat> that's actually showing the power into an eight ohm load so that's about thirty six watts which um, I guess we're doing on one channel so I would imagine it would probably be a bit more than that but this thing's I think the heat thing's starting to get a little bit warm I think what I'm going to try and do is demonstrate to see what the frequency response of this thing's like so this um, this unit is actually marketed as a subwoofer a class D amplifier uh, so I guess the response of it is going to be more on the low frequencies rather than the the higher frequencies but we'll increase it up anyway and let's see what happens in fact what we'll do is take it down first and then we'll I've got a bit of an old-fashioned sig, sig jenny here well that's pretty interesting because that actually is one KC and you can see the output of it's really dropped off. In fact, we'll go take it a bit higher up to so if we take that's 200 hertz, now it's 17 watts. So after about 400, 300, 400 hertz, it's really starting to drop off. So by the time you get to 1 kilohertz, try and increase the amplitude a bit more. We have to really increase the amplitude to get any half decent power. And even then, if we look at the power output there on the on the analyzer, 
19.47 watts I'm having to increase the input quite substantially to get that sort of uh, output but if we put it back to what it was which I think I had it on when I was on 200 Hertz the input was only a couple of volts and you can see that this thing really sort of drops off so what does all that mean in reality well <clears throat> if we were using this in uh, as a sort of amp amplifier to drive a mod transformer for AM uh, then the, the frequency response is not particularly good in fact I guess if you've got a voice like Darth Vader or Windsor Davis uh, you'd probably be alright uh, but uh, for most of us uh, I think you'll find that the, uh, the, the higher frequency response of this amplifier is going to be um, pretty crap really um, so uh, even though it might be uh, might be relatively pokey if you're using both channels I think the output as well might also be a little bit uh, iffy. One of the problems with these Chinese things is that they uh, they come out with all these, this was billed as a 150 watt amplifier but uh, I don't think it's anywhere near that even if I were to push it I mean you can see it starts to clip at an output of about 35 watts uh, on the sort of optimal frequency that it was designed for so um, yeah I think it's going to be a bit of a bit of a problem with this uh, this audio amplifier I think we'll have to look at something else for for a mod transformer uh, driver anyway nice bit of fun with uh, the oscilloscope and uh, this little amplifier hope to catch you again